Hey everybody, do you have a Royal Enfield Himalayan? This right here? And are you on a never-ending quest to trying to get more horsepower out of it? Well today, I'm going to do something that just might help. It's recommended by techbikeparts.com over in the UK as a must-have for your Himalayan. Stay tuned as I get this thing mounted up and we give it a test drive to see if it really makes a difference. Okay, here's the big reveal, y'all. It is the Fuel X Pro from Race Dynamics over in India. That's where this bike is made. Those guys work specifically on the Himalayan and Royal Enfield products to try to squeeze out the most performance out of these bikes. So, we're gonna get this thing mounted up. Come on along. Okay, so just so everybody remembers, Fuel X Pro Auto Tune is what we're installing. This is not the ECM, it doesn't mess with the timing. It is really just a fuel mix. One of the things that I'm concerned about, I'm at a higher altitude, which means that there's less oxygen going in per cubic foot or whatever of air going into the air box. There's less oxygen, same amount of fuel coming out. This auto tuner allows me to set the map several levels richer but also a couple of levels leaner, which I think that may actually be the problem. You don't want too much of a fuel to air mixture either, even though I have opened up the breather as much as I can right now. So anyway, I'm curious what it's gonna look like. So we're gonna get started installing this. This is what it looks like. It comes in two pieces. This is what goes on your handlebars so that you can adjust the, uh, so that you can adjust the maps up and down. And then this connects the ECM and goes in between and I'm missing a part. <laughs> okay, this is everything that comes in the kit. You got three pieces. You've got the harness that connects the ECM to the auto tune. And then you've got this piece, which goes onto the handlebars so that you can adjust your maps on the fly as you're driving. Maybe a disclaimer should be while stopped, but anyway, you get the picture this mounts to the handlebars. So anyway, pretty excited. We're gonna get rolling. Just a disclaimer, I am not a mechanic. Probably one of the people out there, you, yeah, that's watching, my uncle Greg is a subscriber. He is the guy that I always called every time I got in a bind to do mechanic work. So anyway, hey Greg, wish you were here. Sure would go a lot faster. So I'm gonna start by taking the seat and the tank off. 10 millimeter nut on the tank. On the fuel tank, on the line to the fuel filter, there's a little button on the side of a plastic piece that wraps around the hose. I'm gonna take a close up shot of that so you can see what I'm talking about. It's actually really handy the way they built that to come off. This little piece just on the other side of the fuel filter has to come off as well. Then we're going to begin to lift this off. And there are a few more connections up underneath the tank that have to come out as well. Just a couple of little tubes. One of them is a breather hose that comes off that doesn't have a clamp on it. And then just to the right of that, there's another hose that does have a little tension clamp on it that has to come off as well. Should be able to lift it off. There we go. Oh, oh, and looky there. I forgot there's another harness right here on this side that has to come off as well. So see how handy it is me making all these mistakes for you. I watched the video several times and still forgot. Set that guy on my archery target. Okay, so just so you know what it looks like when I'm done, here is one of the harnesses that was just on the inside of the fuel filter. Then this guy was connected up under the left side. This hose was connected. It's a breather hose. I believe it goes down. I've seen it run out through there. And then this also, this is the one with the tension clamp on it. I just squeezed that, pulled it over the little nipple on the end of the uh, pipe up underneath the tank and then pulled it came right off not a big deal so we want to make sure that these three and this guy are reconnected along with where to go obviously the fuel line we just want to make sure that all those guys are reconnected 
whenever we put the tank back on. So basically when everything is said and done, this guy is gonna be mounted up here. It's gonna come down. The cord is gonna come down and connect down here. The auto tune unit is gonna be mounted up under here. Okay, so this is the Lambda sensor right here. You got this wire that goes right up inside here. And that is the part that we need to get out of there and we're gonna switch out. So in order to do that, we've gotta pop off that zip tie. So we'll do that real quick. Pop that out of there. And then you'll see that this guy comes out. So that is the part that we take apart right there. All right, so this little connector is a little counterintuitive. Normally you push down on the tabs. This tab you actually pull towards the outside and that's what releases this guy. And then we bring these guys over and we basically splice them in between that. Okay, that's what it should look like once you've got them switched out there. All right, so now that we've got these guys connected, we are gonna get some cable ties and we're gonna mount them back in there onto the frame. We're gonna make sure and get that front, what is that, the clutch cable? Um, we'll get that clutch cable over there attached like it was. I ran the wire over here. The other set of connectors you can see are on the other side. This is just going to be routed back through here. There's your ground. We'll get that hooked up here in a second. The big fat harness goes into that one. And then this is also connects to the uh, handlebar mount. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and hook up the uh, the control switch up here on the handlebars. I've already got this secured up underneath the Lambda sensor. We've still got this cable to go ahead and secure, but once we get everything else hooked up and we do the final tidying up, then we'll be good to go on that. I'll get that taken care of, but this first. So mounting the switch on the handlebars does take a two and a half millimeter hex. Okay, so one thing you don't wanna do is drop one of the little screws that attach this switch to your handlebars somewhere to find out an hour later that it's in between the fork crossbar and the front fender. Anyway, so that's what happened. But I finally got it mounted and I am gonna go ahead and show you all a picture of what it looks like. So, here, you know, here's the challenge. I've got my little GoPro mount right here so I can look at myself because that's important. Um, and it, But it, I got the switch mounted right there. That's close enough. You know, realistically, you're not gonna be changing that switch as quickly as you're changing the gears. This cable here, I'm gonna run it down with all the rest of the wires, down through the retainer, and then, let's see if you can see where I'm going with it, on the inside of the fork, so it's not hanging out. I'm gonna pull this down here, Definitely sturdy cables. There's no doubt. They're not gonna be falling apart anytime soon. And so then this guy just comes right along here and it gets routed along here. This connects to that and that's the last connector. We still have to attach the ground, but I'm gonna go ahead and do those two things real quick and then we'll see. I've gotta put the gas tank back on, but then we'll see if this guy starts without any error codes, hopefully. So 
So let me do a little walk around here. So on this side, I left everything unclipped so you could tell where I uh, zip tied it to. I zip tied this right there. I zip tied this right here. There was a factory, one of these guys that was down here. I tried to use that, but it disintegrated. So I replaced all of that and rebound all of it together with a zip tie. Got this stuff just bundled right here. Go either side of the tank right there. Put the ground right there. Got the auto tune coming through there. And let's see this side. So I think the important thing to remember on both sides is the tank attaches to that and it attaches to that. So you need to make sure that that's clear on both sides whenever you're mounting it back. So what I did is basically I routed, I routed this on this side of the tank, but I followed along this big bundle of cables right here down on the inside of this tube. And then you can see where I bound the extra little pigtails up over there. And then there it is. And then it goes up to the switch and we're good to go. So I'm gonna mount the tank back and then we'll plug it up, turn it on and see if we can make it work. <sighs> I should have run it out of fuel more <laughs> before I did this. So making sure we've got these cables that I routed coming on either side of where I'm going to be mounting the tank. So be careful, you know, just an FYI, whenever I, this thing came off of the bottom of the tank when I had it set down, luckily I noticed it before I mounted it back. So anyway, just make sure you're putting all the pieces back together that came off. And that just snaps right in. That's really awesome. And we've got this guy it goes back up on the back side. And it just snaps in just like that. Super simple. Okay. Everything looks good. Who is ready to see if this thing's going to start? I sure am. We have lights. We didn't mess that up. We have a fuel pump. Oh, you know what? I'm going to show you all that. Okay, so we're going to watch the fuel light. The number of times that it blinks, if you look down here, here is the instructions that tell you stock is three flashes. So if it flashes more than three times, then we are, uh, we have a heavier fuel to air mixture, which I'm at a relatively high elevation. I don't think that I really want that. So anyway, let's just take a look and see how many times it beeps. That blinks seven times, but it's going to blink again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. So we want to take that down four. So that one said one, two, right? So that one's stock right there is full stock, which is amazing because I felt like it was running rich. My spark plug was more foul than it should have been whenever I put in the iridium. Um, so heck, let's go ahead and start it and let's see what it sounds like. I also, while I had the tank off, I went ahead and cranked the idle screw um, theoretically about 200 RPMs faster. So let's just see what happens. Give it a little juice. So 
So right now we're running eh, 1100 RPM. I was running right at a thousand. I think just even an extra 100 to 150, which is maybe what that is. My goal was to take it up to 1200 and that may very well be. So I think that's gonna make a tremendous difference right there. So. That's at stock. I'm curious if I go down one. Okay, so that one blinked twice. So that one's one less in stock right there. And it's definitely not suffering right now, is it? Well, that's very interesting. So I will tell you that that right there, just the quickness with which it accelerated, the throttle response, it wasn't like that before. Now, whenever we did plug up the tuner, it also said that I was on, what, seven? Which if you remember the sheet, that's three away from the most rich it can be. And we're, I'm at 7,500 feet elevation. That's definitely not where I wanted it to be. I felt like it was running a little bit sluggish and I'm gonna take it back out on the trail. Uh, well, actually not the trail tomorrow necessarily. I'm gonna go do the street run where I had a really hard time maintaining 65. And we're gonna just see what this auto tune does. And as soon as I have that, I'm gonna compile it and we'll ship it back out to you guys. And hopefully, hopefully it helps a lot of y'all make a good decision. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and put the seat back on. I'm excited. Can't wait to ride it tomorrow. Hopefully it's above freezing. My goodness, it's been pretty doggone chilly these last couple of days. But the throttle response with, was so much better. I was on number seven, which is three greater than factory settings. Um, so I felt like everything was sluggish and was running too rich. And I really believe that was the truth. I was gonna wait until tomorrow to go test ride it. So I just went down the road, maybe a quarter of a mile and back. And I gotta tell you, it's just probably because I just did the work putting this thing in, but it seemed to run really well. So I can't wait to get it out on the road and see what happens. That is gonna be, I'm cautiously optimistic. Let's put it that way. So anyway, thank you all for watching. Be back with you with the test. So this little hill, is the one that I've had a challenge keeping it up on the speed limit. Now we're below 70. Still above 65, which is good enough. Oh, 65, 64. Okay, 65. See the sign right there? Bye. That's how fast we gotta go. Yes, I know we just passed a 55 mile an hour speed limit sign. Okay, we're down to 65 already. But not lower. Okay, so now we're on the factory setting, which is three beeps. And it's pegged. It's everything she's got.
under 60 at the same spot we were at 60. Hello again, everybody, and thanks for making it this far. Now for the top takeaways from the Fuel X Pro, including the big one. Did it give the performance I was hoping for? If you took anything good away from this video, please like it. If you look forward to more, hit subscribe and smash the bell for the next one. Despite losing a screw for an hour between the fender and the fork tree after it fell out when I was trying to mount the hand switch for the Fuel X Pro, overall it was a pretty simple installation. Pretty excited about that. Keep in mind, I am not a mechanic. And all of this installation provided me another reason to have to go out and ride the bike. Now my disclaimer, I'm not a scientist. Keep in mind, this is not scientific. This is just me getting out, doing the work, changing it out, and then going out and riding to see if there's any differences that I notice. So don't hold me to everything that I'm saying. The wind is different. The sun's shining different. I ate pizza last night. There's too many variables to be able to account for, okay? And here's the biggest disclaimer. Even if it doesn't give me exactly what I want in performance, I'm happy. Because the reality is, I bought this bike for going on the trails, for riding up to Silverton, to the town that's a ghost town now, but it's on a four-wheel drive trail. That's what I bought the bike for. I didn't buy the bike to be riding on the highways and being able to carve canyons. Highways are simply an obstacle between where I am now and the trails that are at elevation and on dirt. So that's my big disclaimer. If you've not watched one of my rides yet, what in the world? I'm putting the link up there to one of the last rides that I did. Check it out. I'm having fun. Hope you enjoy it as well. With this video, we've got positives and we got negatives. Okay, here's the positive things that I took away from this. Number one, the startup didn't need the choke when I went out this afternoon to start it up. I hit the start button, it started, it idled, and it was good to go. The other night after I had installed it, I had to use the throttle to get it going, but I believe that was before we actually switched any of the maps up. And we found out that it was set for leaner than factory, in fact. So we've got that set back down now. Factory is at three blips of the light, I've got it set at two, which means I'm one leaner than the way it came from the factory. So that actually has improved substantially. Number two, there is much more throttle response. When I'm riding along and I decide to hit the gas, I actually felt it when I hit the gas. It did not throw me off the back of the bike. It didn't leave me on the street. I didn't pop a wheelie, but <laughs> the difference was noticeable. In my opinion, I was, well, actually the first time it happened, I was surprised. I was like, whoa, what's that? I should slow down, back off. So anyway, throttle response. Number three, top speed. I was able to get up to 80 today. Normally, my top speed has been 75, maybe 77. I have never hit 80 uphill, downhill, wind at my back, never. So today, my speed was increased. I'll take that as a positive. Not scientific, I don't know why it happened. Maybe the moon was aligned perfectly, but it happened. Number four, the price. If the things that I've been talking about, the concerns that you have with your Himalayan, then you can save $120 over buying the Powertronic ECU by getting the Fuel X Pro because this solves some of the issues that people have with Himalayans. The difficult to start, difficult to idle, that stuff has, is out there. People are having some issues with that. I haven't really had it after I've warmed up the bike. I live in a colder climate, so I'm kind of used to warming things up. It's not a big deal to me. So it's $179. I'll put a link down in the description if you want to check it out. And it is compatible with all the uh, Euro 4 and Euro 5 Himalayans. Number five, ease of installation. Overall, it was not difficult to put together. Okay, so there are a few negatives, and they're not huge, they're nitpicks, okay? But one of them is, it's got, you've got a switch for the map that's like that big. I'm not sure why it's that big, but it is huge, it is retro and steampunk, and yeah, I guess it goes with the Himalayan a little bit. But if you're like me, we've got pretty crowded handlebars. So really being able to try to find a place to mount that thing on the handlebars was not super easy. Second concern, 
It does only cost $50 less than the Tech Bike Cam if performance is the real issue. If you're not having any of the issues that I already talked about and you're really just looking for more oomph, then spend an extra 50 bucks over the 179, go to Tech Bike Parts. It's a company over in the UK and they've made a cam that will give you some substantial, actual, noticeable, tangible dynode performance gains. So that may just be the way you need to go. Only 50 bucks difference. I'm not sure how much shipping is. And here's the big one. The biggest question that we've got out of this whole thing is, did the Fuel X Pro do exactly what I wanted it to do? It's undetermined. I did get a lot of other things that I didn't know that I wanted to be fixed, like an easier startup, like improved throttle response when you hit the gas, it goes, um, smoothness throughout the power band. I do appreciate all of those things, so I'm definitely not gonna return it. I'm happy with the purchase. I'm gonna keep it. I am, however, gonna continue to search for that elusive my weight with 65 mile an hour speed limit. Thank you for coming this far. If you've never watched my review, I'm gonna link it up top as well. I cover a lot of the same thing, a lot of the concerns that I've had, a lot of the, th the adjustments that I've done on the bike already. So the biggest question is, am I happy with the purchase? It's a big yes. It's a win. It's a win in a lot of areas. I just haven't caught that speckled unicorn yet. So I'm gonna keep chasing that. Hey, if you got any value out of this, like the video, subscribe to the channel. Love to hear some comments and feedback for y'all. Have you bought a Fuel X Pro? Have you bought the ECM? Have you noticed any difference? What kind of upgrades have you done? What kind of bike do you ride and where do you ride? That is all that I've got for you. Thank you from Southwest Colorado Adventures. And this is Ron signing out.